alongside conflict, disagreement, corruption and security. But we begin with a story that highlights the importance of peace. Taking the opportunity of the celebration of Eid al Maloud, which marks the birth of Prophet Muhammad, Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari has asked Nigerians to pray for peaceful elections in the coming year. A statement from the presidency says the president is confident that the celebrations would help to promote mutual harmony and tolerance among Nigerians. The president in his Eid message observed that under his administration, the nation is making great progress in dealing with issues of security, corruption, the reform and restructuring of the economy, as well as infrastructure. He however adds that the country needs the support and prayers of all citizens. The Norwegian Refugee Council says over 200,000 people have fled into camps following ethnic conflict on the border of Ethiopia, Zoromia and Somali region since July. The aid group says most of those in the camps come from the Oromia region as the total number of displaced persons by the conflict is now 700,000. The former governor of the Somali region, Abdi Mohamed Omar, who was forced to resign in August, is facing charges of human rights abuses during his 13 years in power. He denies any wrongdoing. Joining us now is a security expert, Olade Ndi Ario, for more on this. Thank you for joining us on the Definitely. program. So what do you think is responsible for the wave of violent clashes in Ethiopia? Well, you know, uh, since 20, 2017, they suffered a drought twice. And uh, consequently upon that, they had issues of insufficient rainfall, um, which also led to severe water shortages and, of course, catastrophic livestock losses. And um, they also had to go through failed crops. So we're talking about food security now. And when people have no food and no water in any location, the tendency is for them to relocate. And in doing that, they come into contact with people in other zones who are no longer welcoming them. Mm -hmm. So naturally, conflicts will always erupt. So thousands of people have been displaced and scores killed since July. But well, the government has dismissed this various death tolls as lies and exaggeration. What are your concerns about this reaction from the Ethiopian government? You know, again, we look at governments in Africa, the way they react to issues. How a government of a country can wake up and begin to deny what is costing its national communities resources? Is he saying that those called, I mean, the people, I mean, the, those who came in to help them, they have nothing to do in their home countries? They come and um, 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 engage themselves in issues concerning Ethiopia. I don't know why he's denying because the truth is there out in the, in the I mean, in the public space. It only shows the government not responsible. Otherwise, they will have really looked into it critically because as, as, as we are talking here now, people are dying of hunger and starvation. And for and the government to be saying that, it's, it's unbecoming, and, and I mean, for me, unacceptable. Do you think the international community is doing enough in this issue? Well, the U.S. government in particular, and of course, um, the Norwegian government and several other agencies, but they are there in Ethiopia helping out. The more reason why I found it difficult to entertain the excuse from the government. Maybe he wants to admit failure, in our own language, I couldn't come clean. Otherwise, we wouldn't be saying that. Look at the country where, right now, food prices are at above average. They are contending with increased disease outbreaks. And of course, we still have localized international, I mean, intercommunal conflicts arising from uh, the people coming in to take over their land space and all of that. And the, the people who were the residents resisting, they will have limited access they have to, to health care. And more importantly, sanitation, hygiene, you know, and water, they, they're just not there. Mm. Those are not things that will promote peace or development. Let's go back to Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Since taking office in April, he's made sweeping reforms. What exactly can he do about the situation? You know, when, when governments say they are making reforms, they go into figures and statistics. For me, your reform is meaningless if it lacks a human face. Economic policies, political reforms, or whatever, should have the human beings, I mean, citizens of the country or the community in mind. Because ultimately, they are either going to benefit 
from those reforms if they work or they will suffer increased losses. So it has to go back, maybe raise a new team of advisors or consultants. If you have to get them from outside the country, let them look into what they can do to ameliorate the situation. It's all about survival. And that's the problem. Finally, do you see an end to this crisis anytime soon? I don't think so, because mm -hmm. for as long as the conditions prevalent are still subsisting, um, migration will still continue. And for as long as I say migrating, conflict will continue. And of course, all, all the sufferings that they are going through will also persist. Again, they need rain, and that's very important. If they have rainfall, all the problems they have had, they may be reversed, and life may come up anew for them. But that may take time. It's not, it's not there here nor there. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Security expert Oladende Ario, thank you for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you very much. Moving on now, South Africa's main opposition party has called for an independent investigation into a 36,000 payment made to a fund that financed President Cyril Ramaphosa's campaign last year. President Ramaphosa, who has staked his reputation on rooting out corruption, told lawmakers this month that the payment by facilities management firm African Global Operations was for work done by his son. On Friday, Ramaphosa said he had unintentionally misled Parliament and that the money was used to support his candidate in the ANC leadership race. The disclosure is controversial for the president as he is trying to restore public confidence in the ANC ahead of a national election next year.